geht. Na, ist gut. Ich kann hier meistens. Okay, das ist ein gutes Zeichen. Normally I do that with my own thoughts. We contradict each other very often. I hope you do the same. I was thinking of what I just heard. Bear with me. I'll be short. I've always been. I will fear not to fall short of your expectations. But um, I, I was hearing what, what was said earlier about Nokia still being around. Are they? What's the percentage of people working in managerial positions for Nokia at their prime that are still there? Is that the kind of survival that we want for our firms? Not really. Well, I'm going to talk about personalizing personalization, which sounds a bit awkward, repetitive, but there is something about it. I want to start where my partner, Theodore, left it earlier, which is about what we do in Fintecois, which is, if you remember Chris Skinner's three layers of banking that we talked through in the morning, which was at the bottom, about the back end, about the middle thing, and about the front end, and everything being in different strata over there. Okay? This is what we do. We transform data, we automate processes, we personalize experiences. Now, this is actually trying to put everything together in that philosophy and making something that works for the customer out of it. And it starts with data at the core, it puts together a layer of products, digital products that are made out of that data. Whether you talk about pensions, wealth, lending, insurance, deposit, these are products. Then you think at the other end, at the consumer end, the consumer interacts in different ways with a mobile, with a web, with a chatbot, with the IoT. That's how you actually contact, enter direct contact with the customer. And what's missing in between? A strong layer of automatization. See, this automation is done with um, KYC automation, RPA automation, process automation, authentication automation different layers of automation. So what we can do is actually to pierce through this far too much layered technology and create journeys. What kind of journeys? Like, you know, this is a typical onboarding experience on a mobile that goes through a hyper-personalization engine, that goes through an eligibility automation, who gets to do what, KYC automation to make sure that we know uh, what we do, to have a workflow automation further on, and then eventually ending up with a digital product catalog and with the digital product that is based on data. Okay. Now, this is very interesting, and there is a booth out there where some of my colleagues are actually demoing to understand how simple it is actually to create these kind of journeys by simply combining the things that we do. But I have something there that is missing a little bit, and something that I want to emphasize. And this is about the consumers. This is about the consumers evolving. The consumers not being there where they used to be. Remember the socks in the 80s and the 90s? Almost like Ford T to the cars. Well, we're not there anymore. Life has become a lot more colorful, attending to the needs and desires that are not yet known of different kinds of consumers. What does this mean for us? Does it mean anything? It means, because in the digital world, we are looking at more and more personal experiences. You open your Facebook account. It knows what you're doing. You open your Google account. It knows what you're searching for. 
You open your Netflix account. It tells you, uh, because you watched da da da, you should watch this movie. Yeah? And these are the guys that are doing it kind of limited, because the limit, there is a limited choice on Netflix. And the time for the consumption of the service is pretty long. It takes two hours, it takes 30 minutes for a documentary. That's a long time to invest in interacting with the brand, in interacting with the product. Yeah? How about products that we interact for only for 10 seconds? As onboarding, or three minutes, as loan origination should be. How about these kind of experiences? How fast do we need to be able to provide this level of personalization? I call it personalization 1.0, where you just get the suggestion for the best next buy. And best next buy is pretty good here, but it's a lot better if you look at Spotify. Why? Because the intensity of the consumption is much smaller. So you're taking only minutes of your life and only cents that you're not actually spending at the time when you're, when you're consuming the, the, the song, just to hop on, hop off experiences and products. Mm. Banks are getting consumerized. Banks are getting consumerized to an extent that now people expect from their banks to behave as consumer brands. So this is actually a, a survey that was done by, by uh, BCG and the, the analogy is there and many, many of the, you know, more, than, more than a third of people would want to see a bank that works like Amazon where you have a marketplace of everything, where you get the next purchase suggested, where you can check in, check out so easily. But then, funny enough, the second thing is a personal shopper, <coughs> which is like a shopping assistant. So if Amazon is the fully digital experience, the personal shopper is actually a fully humanized experience. A supermarket. I want to have all the shelves available and you know, just pick the products that I want. A dentist, this must, must be a bit awkward, or my gym. I want... The idea is that we have this discussion about should the bank be fully digital? Should the bank be just branches? I think that age is gone. And I think, yes, you need branches. Why do you need branches? You may not need the branches as we know them, but uh, you know, I used to work for a healthcare company before. At the time when the company was very small, we had about a thousand customers that we knew. In fact, there were some physicians, and there were some nurses there that knew every one of the regular clients. And when they were walking in the clinic, they were greeted, Hi, Mrs. Popescu. How are you? How is little Matei? Is he fine? Does he still have those colds? You know? And that is personal and empathic experience. My banker, you know, I used to go to this very, very small agency, a uh, very small branch. And there was a lady there. Hi, Mr. Megwoods. How are you? How can we help you today? You know? What happened? Probably she got fired. That's not the kind of investment we want to see in the relationship with, the, with, with our customers. We want digital engagement. But how can you balance the two? You know? Because you need to be able digitally to understand your client to the level of these details. And this is actually digging into the customer DNA. We use nowadays KYC. KYC stands for know your customer. How much do we know about our customer through the KYC? Nothing. It's only by putting together the identity with a universe of data, some of the data that we have inside, some of the data that we can trigger uh, from our knowledge, some of the data that we can find outside of the organization.
Then it's about creating this personalized curriculum. Okay? How personal can the personal interaction with the customer be? And then, of course, nowadays, is artificial intelligence. So it takes a little bit of recursive learning, a little bit of understanding what the consumer consumed, what the consumer did not consume, and when. So remember this chart of yesterday. Yeah? We're talking about systems of record, the so-called core systems. We're talking about systems of intelligence, the so-called middleware. We're talking about the systems of engagement, the so-called front ends. But this is the historical map of a bank. If I am Revolut or Monzo, I don't bloody care. I, this doesn't exist for me. It's only the customer experience that matters. And I create digital assets inside my systems only in order to serve the experience of the customer. And even if I take this, this look and I, I'm, I'm able to browse through and I'm able to address topics at each of, the, of these layers, I'm still experiencing two major gaps. One, is the data in my systems of record the right data that I need to interpret for my customers? <coughs> so there is a data relevance gap there that I need to fill in with data from outside. And if I'm going towards the customer, the fact that I can communicate with the customer omnichannel, does this tell me what I need to communicate what I need to communicate to the customer? Probably not. So there is still an empathy gap there. Yeah. Retailers know this for quite some time. Online retailers have built, have, have built on it. And now, we're no longer thinking of decisions to buy, decisions to engage as binary. You know? I joined, I, 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 from awareness to purchase. This is dead. And we know in our industry that from intention, from awareness to intention, to a desire to action, to post action, it's a continuum and it's a complicated journey. And we also know something else, that we're no longer customers, we're consumers. We're consumers. We're meant to consume services. And that consumption can be intense and can last for 20 seconds. That consumption can be, let's say, not so intense and last for so many days to get a mortgage approval, a mortgage approval. So, how do we do this? We have to understand where is the customer? Where is the consumer? Where does the journey start from? And this is, frankly, an act of love. This is filling the empathy gap. This is about creating a human-like behavior. And you may think I'm, I'm, I'm an idealistic soft guy, but this is an Accenture study talking about the human-like behavior of a bank. And the human-like behavior of a bank means that it has to have hyper-personalization. It has to create confidence. It has to be generous. It has to be persistent and consistent. And these are attributes that we have to push towards our consumers. And who are the segments of consumers that we address? We get a lot of discussion about millennials, you know, being different and consuming in a different way from Generation X, and even worse. We think of Generation Z as being always on digital natives. I did not know what Chris would be presenting this morning, but there's a drawing of my daughter, and it tells about exit. When they engage in, a, in, a, in, a, in an experience, they immediately think of, how do I get out of this? Yeah? How do I get out? How can I shorten my experience as much as possible? How can I learn my classes for whatever in 20 seconds instead of two hours? How can I do this as fast as possible? Is this hop on, hop off thing that we learn about, Generation Z? But are they our clients in banks? Uh, 
I was surprised actually. Uh, she, she's using Apple Pay and she asked me for a plastic card. I don't know what's happening. Just probably to throw it away like five minutes later. But there is a different category of consumers. I would suspect that banks are making a bit more money from than Generation Z. Maybe the battle for the Generation Z intent to purchase a hamburger or actually a quinoa salad is lost for now. But the battle for these kind of consumers, these kind of consumers, is still open. Why? Because we have far broader banking needs and experiences. We're not talking only about you know, payments, we're not talking about only coming to come, we're talking about pensions, we're talking about insurance, we're talking about deposits, we're talking about investment, we're talking about mortgage, all that. Consumer loans. Now, creating a digital experience that encompasses all our digital life, all our, our digital banking life, that is something. That is something that may actually create loyalty. And this is still to be defended. And the game is actually not yet between you know, the challengers and the incumbents. But it's actually of the incumbents who would be moving faster and would be able to integrate faster fintech features that would allow them to have the superpowers of the rebels and keep their superpowers of traditional banks. But this is still very static. This is still personalization 1.0. The personalization 2.0 is actually called contextualization. I am a different person when I'm here on the stage speaking to you or attending a conference or when I'm climbing a mountain because that's my hobby that, by the way, needs some financing. Or when I'm spending time with my kids. Or when I'm partying and attending a festival. And it is this behavior, this contextual behavior, that is much more important than who I am demographically and socially. This actually triggers behaviors that are different. So it doesn't matter that we actually if you think of it, we have not taken our digital phones and digital applications because we have seen our kids using them. Digital adoption is native to us as it is to them. Digital adoption is something that pushes us to be who we want to be, what we want to be, and we want our suppliers to know this and be there for us. There's another piece of Accenture study that says that um, 48% of customers, of loyal customers of banks, expect to be treated special for their loyalty. 33% are willing to leave their current bank if they are not treated special. How much special can your offer be if it's for half of the people? This is something for us to develop. Because you are hopping off, hop, hopping in, hopping hop, hop on, hop off, different statuses, different experiences, different situations. You're before you go to the holiday, you're after you have come from holiday, you're before you got married, you're after you got married, you're before you got divorced, you're after your divorce. Before you bought a house, after you bought a house. These are bank events that need to be predicted based on behavior. Are we there? Because this is the context. This is personalization 2.0. Personalizing personalization. There are waves of change in this universe. And I've always thought that, you know, you see something that looks like a wave, it may not be large enough to be written. So you may ignore it. Don't jump for every other fat that you see in the universe and will be dead in one year time. But there are certain trends that we know for sure will last. There are certain rules of how this world works that we know 
are going to be there. And the waves that we see are actually not like this. I like this. No. It's waves of technology. Remember Brett Kane's uh, speech of yesterday with the five levels, generations of banks, how we are actually moving now from a digital bank to ubiquitous bank. Okay? And how we are actually making this leap forward and at some point, one technology cannot properly be addressed by the incumbents because they would have to fight with their own model, but actually they are addressed by new players. And new players attack always, disruptively, from below. Faster deployment to market, lower prices, higher versatility, higher customization, all that. This is not something new. This has been there for years in all kinds of technologies. Addressing needs that are not there with much faster and more agile resources than the incumbents. That's why we, FintechOS, provide that kind of thing that allow you to morph your digital transformation into something that can happen 10 times faster. So, where does this lead us? Well, I would say we have a lot of information out there in the world that is still not integrated. We expect in a few months to reach 20 billion connected devices in the IoT world. We expect this customization and contextualization, a hyper-personalization to reach new ends. I will always buy from someone who talks to me in a way that makes me buy. Is this chatbots? Is this humans? Is this algorithms? I don't know and I don't care. From this point of view, I'm just a consumer. So what do I expect? I expect the bank of one. We're no longer in the age of supermarkets with zillions of products on one shelf for everybody, for zillions of consumers. We're in the, er in the era where in my phone I have access to a product, to a shop that is designed for me. And this border between banking and retail and something we have already seen being dissolved in China with all those digital empires. Where is this a bank? Is this a retailer? Who cares? But there is also a bank here that has a bazaar where you can buy things. And by the way, this is fully integrated um, e-commerce experience. And there is also a very large retailer in this country that as soon as they will start offering financial services, they may have hundreds of thousands of consumers willing to pay. So we don't know how this is going to, to end up. But the key to addressing and keeping a client, keeping a customer, keeping a consumer, is always about being there for him or her, where she is, and so on. And there is no generation gap. There is a context gap. Nintendo DS, when it appeared, and it was launched in the market, more than 50% of the users were over 50. They were not kids. There are information that they collect from the universe that make us believe that we are something else than what we are. Who is doing redecoration of homes? In all ads, you see young families with children. Young families with children don't have the money and the time to do it. It's actually people where children have left home or new homeowners that do most of the decoration. We have to look at data and understand behaviors based on data in order to do that. To do the hyper-personalization for the next generation. Otherwise, we're still dealing 
with the legacy. Some of that needs refurbishment. Some of that needs replacement. We can do a little bit with technology and with our minds combined to build a better world and make less stupid mistakes tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Sergio. Any question? No? It was clear. Crystal clear. Thank you so much. Or hungry. Sorry? Or hungry. No, not at all. You know what you should speak next time is when it doesn't work out. When innovation doesn't work out. What are the, what are the problems we are facing when you're integrating FinTech OS 2? Because we never talk about failure. We always talk about oh, how nice innovation has been implemented, but never it didn't work out. We screw up, we learn, we move forward. Do you have an example in mind? I, well, I think, I, think, I think it's... The world is full of examples of learning from mistakes. And um, I also... What, what I preach is that as soon as you can move ten times faster, the world changes. In Chris Skinner's speech this morning, he said that it's, ta it's taking on average for the large banking institutions one year and a half to decide what to do, mm. which is strategy, and then years again to decide how to do it, technology. You know? So if you put these two things together, it's such a huge amount of time. What we're trying to do here with Integros is actually to shorten that time, te that time frame ten times. Now what does this mean? That you will not have the time if you want to compete much faster. If you know that there are some digital leaders out there that are doing something, you can already replicate at a fraction of the cost, at a fraction of the time, what they have built. Okay? Oh, but, fast. but that comes with the fact that in our minds, management-wise, we have to, pre to be prepared to be agile. Which means that we may not strike it 100% right from the beginning. By the way, we never do. Okay, irrespective of how long we think, because the longer we think, the, the older the data that we are basing our, our, our decision upon. And the older the brain is, becomes. Yeah. And, yeah. Exactly. So, I am a true believer in agility. And agility business-wise. Put something in the market. Test and learn. Come back. Change. And this is the, the, where, where, where it's very important to have a powerful system that can be configured and adapted and changed very easily. Because you no longer need another six months to do version two of the product, or version three of the product in the market. Yeah, you can change it directly. Time. And this is actually where, you know, 30 years ago, uh, people started, you know, to write uh, programs in more and more complex languages, using more and more complex libraries. It's a new level, it's a, it's a new level, you know? When seven you lines, seven lines was right. Seven lines, 35 million. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. I wish the same for you. <laughs> See you next year for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's move to another panel.